Hello everyone, welcome back to MGM Paints. My name is Jimmy and today we are going to be painting some Pike and Shot models from Warlord Games. These Pike and Shot models are in their epic scale which is 15 millimeter. I'm really looking forward to getting these guys on the tabletop and we are going to be using a very fast and efficient way to paint these guys up. So follow along with me and I hope you enjoy. Okay, we're going to start off with a black primer and actually prime these guys on the sprue and then I clipped them off to where there was a little bit of sprue on the bottom. These guys are going to slot into bases, so this just serves as a pretty good handle to work with. These figures are absolutely beautiful. I'm so impressed with the amount of detail and just the amount of attention that they have put on these small figures. It's, it's really just hard to believe when you're looking at them all painted up in a row just how great they look and I just I can't wait to see massive armies on the tabletop. Now we're going to start by giving the miniatures a Zenithal highlight. You may have seen this method referred to as slap chop as well. If you happen to have a white can of primer you can certainly give this a dusting at a 45 degree angle from the top. This will save you a little bit of time. It doesn't take very long to do what I'm doing, however, and I just took some white and I am dry brushing that on. I haven't quite found a white primer that I really trust and this just gives me a little more control over what I'm doing. The effect that we're going for is we're going to use Army Painter Speed Paints, so where you're going to have a lot of shadow, the paints are automatically going to create that shadow for you. There will be no need to use a shade or a wash on these miniatures. The dry brushing technique is very simple. I just loaded some white paint on my brush, slightly damp, not a absolute dry brush, slightly damp. And then I wipe away the majority of the paint on a paper towel. And then I just go over the miniatures at a 45 degree angle, front and back, up and down, side to side. All right, the next step is to get a smattering of speed paint, and I'm gonna go with a lot of earthy tones. I'm gonna start with Sand Golem, and you don't have to use this exact recipe. Again, grab whatever colors you want to grab, but I want these men to look like that the local Lord came by and said, hey, look, we need you for fighting today. They threw on whatever they had, and they went to battle. So focusing on the pants first, I'm going to grab Sand Golem. I'm going to go through, I've got a size one brush. You don't have to be extremely careful here, but when you're using this paint, you do want to try to direct it where it's supposed to go. I'm going to just go and randomly pick out a few of these men and give them a Sand Golem uh, color on the pants. In this particular example, I picked miniature one, four, and six. So quickly flip the sprue around, count from the other side, and that way you know that the pants are going to match the front and the back. Okay, next let's bring in some Speed Paint Burnished Red. I do like this color as it is a brown with a little bit of that mahogany kind of a tint to it. We're going to go through and do the exact same thing that we just did with Sand Golem. We're just going to pick out some random men and apply this paint to their pants. I count off what men in the line have this particular color. I flip the men over and then I paint the back sides the same color as well. Now you can paint these men in a variety of different ways. If you want them to be all one color and have them in uniform, it is totally up to you. The cool thing about this Pike and Shot game is you can play in two different settings. You can play the Thirty Years War or you can play the English Civil War. I'm going to be going with more of the English Civil War um, just out of personal preference, but you again could paint these all one color if you choose. Alright, the next color that I'm randomly going to grab is like a ochre clay. And we're going to go through and pick out the rest of the pants in, the, in this color. This will give us pretty good variation. You could also, on some of the miniatures, I've used Bony Matter for a lighter color. You could even go with Hardened Leather for a more brighter type of brown. There's no rhyme or reason to why I'm picking certain miniatures for certain colors. 
These guys are going to be in rank and file. They're pretty small. When you look at them at a distance of three to four feet, I just want you to be able to tell that they're a little bit different. And that's kind of the, the goal with giving them all of these different colors. Now with this paint still fresh on the palette, let's go through and get some of their jackets as well. And I am going to just pick some that maybe have a brown bottom and give them this ochre clay kind of a jacket as well. Again, similar to the pants, we're going to apply the exact same method, go through and just pick a few random colors. And it's really just going to make the unit look different and give it a ton of variation. Again, you want to try to be as neat as possible, but if you do make a mistake, like spill onto the spear or something like that, totally not a big deal, as we're going to use some darker colors later on to cover a lot of that up. So, again, try to paint concisely, but if you mess up, not a big deal at all. And once again, I find that counting the miniatures really helps. As you flip the sprue over, find the one with the matching jacket, counting them off, and then you simply just block those colors in, and we're going to move on to another one. All right, remember Sand Golem, the color that we used for some of the pants? I think that might be a good jacket color as well. So let's go through and randomly pick a few coats to be Sand Golem. And again, I'm trying not to stack it where I made the pants that color as well. Just uh, wherever I use Burnish Red or the Okra, I can go back and just use this color. Again, just going for variation. All right, so let's switch it up a little bit. And for this one, I'm going to use the Pastel Indigo. And this is a really nice light blue color. I've also had good success with Battleship Gray. I found that the two looked fairly similar at a distance. But I do want to have some of these men that uh, have a different color jacket just to bring a little bit of color to the line. And for that, this pastel indigo is going to be perfect so we're gonna quickly block in two of these models or two of these miniatures with that color up next how about some ruddy fur another speed paint i went to the store and just randomly grabbed a lot of drab browns and yellows and things like that so we'll go through with this color and put it on a few of the coats see how they look and then maybe we'll grab one more color for some of the other ones and for that last color, I just happened to grab some Ancient Honey. So we'll go through and give some of them a yellow type of a coat. And I have really enjoyed this particular speed paint. Not so much the Maze Yellow because it is a bit more translucent. But this yellow goes down really well over white. And you can tell just from that Zenithal when it gets into those darker places, it tends to stay dark. I found that this is a really good color to use. Ancient Honey, definitely high on my list. Okay, as we get towards the end of this chapter, everything is starting to look really good. We're ready to turn the page on to something else. We're going to go with another speed paint, and in this particular case, I'm going to grab Grim Black, and we are going to go through and get some of their boots. Again, no rhyme or reason to why I'm painting certain miniatures with black boots. Just going to randomly pick out about four or five and give them Grim Black, also one of my favorite speed paint colors. And when that's done, how about some hardened leather to mix into this? This is going to be a lighter brown. Again, just go through, randomly pick out some of the boots to apply this color. And with that paint still fresh on our palette, I'm going to use this to go through and get some of the straps that they're wearing. You may see some of the men that wear uh, a sash or something like that, and you can use a red color or a yellow or a blue or something to make it kind of pop a little bit. For these basic straps, I'm just going to go through and use hardened leather, and I'm also going to get the swords that they're wearing as well, as I figured they would be in some kind of leather scabbard or something like that. Flip the miniatures around, get any straps that you may see on the front, and that'll be it for hardened leather. Okay, for flesh tones, we are going to use Crusader Skin, and we are just going to go through and put dots on the faces. I am not so much worried about painting facial hair and things like that on these guys. I just think they're a bit too small. I see a lot of people that do that, and they look absolutely fantastic. 
but there's also people out there that can paint eyeballs on 15 millimeter figures. I'm just not one of those. So I'm going through quickly using Crusader Flesh to put on the face and then be sure that you go through and get all the hands as well. When you're doing the hands, just remember that each miniature tends to have two of them and they may be hidden somewhere or just a little piece of the hand poking out with these men standing in lines. It's really easy to get everything painted up and you come back and you're like, oh, I missed that guy's hand. The next color out is dark wood, and I did save this color a bit towards the end because we're going to use it to get the spears. We're going to start out by getting uh, the remainder of the boots. This is a great dark brown, so the boots look really good in this color, but we're also going to use it to get the spears as well. For the spears, I think it's pretty easy to just work in a line so I get everything below the hands on each miniature, and then I'll go and get the... The, the tops. You can see right here that I actually spilled over a little bit onto one of the coats and again it's not a big deal because when this color dries it's just simply going to look like shading and nobody is really going to notice something like that in a rank and file type of uh, lineup. That said, when you're going close to the indigo blue or the yellows, you do want to try to be a little easier with this and be sure that you don't have too much on your brush. What I really like about the speed paint is it just runs right off the brush. It fills into the cracks and it just looks very good over a light tone as well. So really, really enjoying the speed paints. I'm going to quickly get the tops of the spears running down to the hands and you want to be sure that you flip this at a 90 degree angle and get all sides because as you can see I'm kind of running down using the side of my brush here uh, going pretty quickly and you just want to be sure that you get all the angles uh, covered so there's no white showing. Also on this line towards the bottom there's going to be some of the spears that are showing on the back so I just use this color to quickly block that in as well. All right, if you want, this is a good time to go in and get some hair too. For those men that you feel deserving of brown hair, you're probably still gonna have black on your palette as well. So you could do some black hair and then you can grab some other random color and have three or four different hair combinations very quickly. This was at the point in looking at these miniatures, I did go through and decide to uh, use that leather brown to get the swords here in case it was in some kind of scabbard or something else. And we are getting close to being done with these before I break out the secret weapon. Alright, the next paint up is a Gravelord Grey. And I'm going to use this on the swords, on the handles, the hilt, that type stuff. And this is also a really good color for shading or if you've missed anything that you maybe didn't get color in that is still showing white. This is a great color to apply to that, just to kind of cover it up. So you don't have to go back to that old color. If you still saw something that was white, you can hit it with a little bit of Gravelord Gray, and it is going to give it some shadow and just tint it down nicely and make it blend in. You can see that here in this example where I saw that I didn't paint this guy's little sleeve and arm right here. So instead of going back to the old paints, I'm just gonna hit it with a little bit of Gravelord Gray. It'll shade it down and we can continue on. With our next paint, we're gonna to go to Polished Silver, which is one of the Speed Paint Metallics. And to be honest, I wasn't the biggest fan of a lot of these, but this Polished Silver, I have found a pretty good application for this. So I'm gonna go through and get whatever helmets that they would be wearing that would be metal. I am also going to get the tips of the spears. All right, pretty easy stuff so far. We are now going to just quickly lighten these guys up a little bit as they do look a little bit dark. You can really see how the speed paints have provided a lot of details on these models, a lot of shading. We're gonna go to Vallejo Flat Flesh. Use whatever flesh color that you want, as long as it's bright. I have wiped the majority of this off on my palette, and I'm just gonna go through and give some quick highlights by dragging a semi-dry brush, not quite, but I'm just gonna be dragging that across the fingers and across the face to accentuate some of those features. I find you wanna avoid using a wet brush here and trying to get in there and paint the details. I just end up 
covering that up or the paint runs in and it's like I have to start over. So I just quickly get a lot of the paint off on a painting surface and go through and just drag over with a slightly dry brush and it just makes the, the fingers pop. It doesn't run into the recesses. And with that step complete, we are ready for the secret weapon, and I absolutely love this paint. It is probably my most favorite paint, but it is Iraqi Sand by Vallejo. It's a model color. I simply go through and get a, a small makeup brush and wipe the majority off on a paper towel. This is just a very light, dry brush of Iraqi Sand. It is going to go over all of the miniatures, and it is really just going to make the details pop and just really make a lot of the edges come to life. As a quick example, I'm trying to show you on this bit of sprue kind of how much paint I have on there. It's a pretty light dry brush, but the effect is going to be fantastic at the end. So you'll really see it pop on the boots. You'll see it pop on the straps that they're wearing. I even go through the pikes that they have and give those a light dry brush, everything over, up, down, and side to side. Here on the back, you'll really see a lot of those details pop out, such as the sword. It catches a little bit of the helmet. Overall, just it gives a very nice effect to the miniatures. And that's the last step to these guys. I'm calling them complete. I put them down on the base and I use Vallejo Earth Texture to fill in around the base. I won't show you that on this particular video. But after that earth texture is dried, I go through and give them a little bit of static grass. Again, you choose to use whatever you want. And here at the end for the finished product, I think these guys turned out really well. You can really see the details in these for them even being 15 mil. They're going to look fantastic when you get them all based up with their buddies and on a stand like you see here. And with that, these parliamentarians are ready for the battlefield. What you saw today for that line took approximately 40 minutes with me filming. All right, that wraps up our video. I really hope you enjoyed that. This is a really quick and easy way to get your pike and shot models on the table. I do hope to do some battle reports of this, but there are a lot of miniatures to paint. I uh, hope to get this done in the next few months, and this is something that is coming further down the road. Again, thanks so much for watching. Really appreciate your support. Thanks so much to the Supporters Club. Your names are on the screen now. It's by no means necessary. If you've watched the video this far, you've done more than enough to support the channel. So thank you so much. We'll see you in the next one. Take care.